Hi, I'm Dusty and welcome back to my lab. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about destiny. <clears throat> um, previously talked a little bit about this concept kind of from a different perspective when I talked about free will in a previous video. Um, kind of want to expand on and maybe just delve from a different direction into that idea and uh, just where my mind goes and how I think about this kind of thing. Um, so first of all, let, let's, uh, let's take it back to basics. So in, in the free will video, I talk about uh, the original state or really uh, the state of pure nothingness, true nothingness. Um, I think for a lot of reasons, we can be motivated to think that um, this is in some sense, the most fundamental state. It's the simplest. It's, it's um, you know, what we have this human conception of time. So we want to think of prior, you know, in the sense that like, you know, we think of the big bang as being prior to this, but really it, it was it, in, in the sense of there being no time, it was really just space moving, you know, objects moving through space and, and transforming and changing. Um, so to get back to this original nothingness state, um, it's very hard to imagine to think about what that is because the, the very, you know, act of thinking is completely contradictory to what the state is. Um, even to think about, you know, trying to encapsulate or, or define it is, is impossible. If we, you know, it's the second we draw a line, there's something there. Um, but essentially the idea and what I think is kind of going on here is that if there is nothing, okay, then there, the only thing that could exist is something that's non-causal. And this is very uh, hard for us to wrap our heads around as human beings, um, because everything in our existence, everything in our, our perception and existence as, as sentient creatures is, is causal. Um, everything has cause and effect. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, what goes up must come down. There, there seem to be fundamental physical laws that, that exist. Um, and the, seemingly the most fundamental might be causality, you know, regardless of any of the physics, regardless of, of any of that, you know, any, any action has an equal and opposite reaction. Um, things bounce into each other and interact. Um, but if there's nothing, then how can anything interact? Uh, how can anything be? Um, not really claiming to answer that or, or understand that, um, but I will, and, and this is going to be the, you know, the major driving force of this, and it is a admittedly an assumption, but I challenge anyone to, to, you know, think about it a different way or, or explain it in another way. Um, will is possibly the most fundamental causal aspect of existence. Um, a number of philosophers have talked about this. I think that, uh, Schopenhauer with his, uh, will as representation is kind of the closest in, in my perception and, and conception of, of what is going on. Um, but effectively if will um, and not free will necessarily. I mean, I, I think that the concept of free will, the way that we talk about it is a misnomer and, and kind of, you know, verbally and, and semantically meaningless. Um, at least it, it detracts from, from what actually is happening. And what I think is actually happening is that yes, will exists. It's not free. Um, and it's not free because that original will, which willed existence into existence, literally nothing into something. It's not as it's not as directed or conscious or intentioned as, as we might, you know, think of ourselves as willing something into existence. We, we as sentient self-aware beings will things intentionally into existence, but if there is nothing, then how can there be any intention? How can there be any conception? There is nothing, there's nothing there to manipulate or understand, be aware of. So I think that this is kind of the, 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 uh, the important bit in that, if we want to think about what destiny is, I mean, destiny, it, it's in it, destination. You know, we, there, there is a, a, we're essentially a bunch of dominoes falling. Okay. There's a, everything has a causal uh, reason. Everything is cause and effect, action, reaction. Um, and it, it flies in the face of free will. And it's, it's interesting that, you know, we, we, we can talk about free will in one debate or one discussion and then have a separate discussion of destiny, it seems like, but really they're, they're, they're mutually exclusive. It seems as though you can't have one without the other. You can't have a destiny and also have free will or even any type of will. How can we have, you know, as sentient beings, like, all right, if we're going to say, okay, if I had true free will, then I, you know, and I can imagine myself sprouting wings and flying away, then, you know, I should be able to do that. But that's not really what the type of will that we have, if we have any, um, the will that we have is, you know, is dictated, like I said, by most fundamental physical laws, um, and, you know, natural laws, Na natural is a, is a weird word, especially when we're, we're talking about, you know, the, the beginning of the universe, 
um, because there were no, there was nothing natural, nothing natural existed, nothing existed. Um, however, I think that in the sense that, okay, maybe will wills something, an amorphous existence, a, a will to exist in the most fundamental way. Um, it's impossible for us to imagine, you know, how that would play out. But I mean, I think that we have to admit and, and also, and, and just acknowledge that we're in the middle of it. You know, we, we, we are a result of this most fundamental willing into existence. And when Schopenhauer talks about will as representation, I think that if we, if we consider will as being the most fundamental driving force between behind all of, all of the universe and all of existence in general, then we have to just kind of understand that everything that we see and everything that we interact with is, was at some point willed or is willful. Um, and in the sense that like, sure, I, I have a, a self-conception and, you know, even if it's illusory, you know, even if it's not true will, um, which we could, we'll talk a little bit about, I can intentionally will, you know, self-mindedly will something into existence and, And it can be encapsulated. It can be represented. Okay, so I, I and then other will willful agents then come into contact with these representations that my will transformed the the already the the, the building blocks of the universe into. Um, that's that's generally the idea. I mean, in in this in this paradigm, the concept, the idea is that you know the most fundamental force is that of will, and everything else while relevant and important um, and, and you know, solid and material is kind of secondary. Um, and it's, it's not to say that, you know, I, I can, you know, run through a wall or I can do this or that or, or whatever. You know, I can't fly. You know, I can't sprout wings and fly away. But I, I might be able to build a plane. I might be able to conceive of that and, and you know, gather mater the materials and, and put them together and then, you know, get a similar functionality and, and, and result. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit more about um, like why we would want to do this. Like what what is what's the point? Um, I think that it's 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 odd and and it can be hard for people in in our modern age to think about these questions because we, we think so quantitatively. Um, you know, a person's success or failure is largely quantitative. I, I mean, but based on the metric of our society, um, it, it it's an abstraction of, of of currency and money and and value to to society. And the weirdest thing about that is it's all value within the concept of, of there being a right way to live, a right way to exist. Um, and, you know, clearly, I mean, there, there are, and this is something I want to touch on, there's a lot more wrong ways to exist than there are right, right ways. Um, you know, there, there are, there's no right way to, to live your life and there's no right way to approach a problem, but there are a lot of wrong ways. You know, like if, if you wanted to dig, to dig to the other side of the earth, you could pound sand, you know, you could punch sand on the beach, you know, for an eternity, and you might have the same goal in mind, and maybe eventually you would get there. But we can say that that's kind of, you know, even though it's 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 a right solution, it might not be as as ideal as another right solution. Um, and and you know, if you're just if if instead of you know trying to pound sand, you're just you know running around in a circle on the beach, then that's probably not going to get you anywhere either. Um, so again, th there's no right way to do anything. There might be better ways to do things if, you know, based on what your, your goal is, but there are definitely wrong ways to do things. I mean, as far as like, you know, me willing my, my instrument, my body into existence and into the world and, and, you know, living my life, if I die, if, if, some, if I incur some moral injury, that could be considered a wrong way to live because I'm no longer living, right? Um, so let, let's think about this destiny thing and like why we why we might like have this conception of destiny or believe that that we're fated. Um, I think that this is tied into karma too. Um, you know, we feel as though there's, there's a path or like a rightness or, you know, th there, everything is going to be okayness to the world and that there's a, a rhyme to the, you know, rhyme and reason to the chaos and madness. Um, and I think that that might be, you know, if we want to just, you know, really be cynical about it, that might be kind of what, what's going on and that we, we have a confirmation bias and we want to believe that, the, the suffering and the hardships that we go through have some, you know, fundamental and, 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 you know, valid reason that we're going through it. Um, maybe it's true, maybe it's not. I mean, I, I think that, you know, we can, we can say it's objectively true in that generally speaking, people don't grow or, or become better people unless they're, they're, um, you know, faced with a task or, or hardship or obstacle. Um, 
<clears throat> but at the same time, there's no because because we can we can see that the world is causal and and material and and one thing falls after the other. It's hard for us to say that there there that you know in the same way that there's a destination that it seems as though there should be one final destination that that there there is a determinate you know factor in all of this and that we're just kind of even though we have the illusion of will or free will it's kind of just happening you know and and we're 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 just as mechanical as everything around us and everything that we create um and i kind of want to push back on that a little bit and and like i'm not going to push back on it in a in a serious, in like a, a significantly like hard way. I, I'm just kind of going to change the way that we are going to think about it. Um, so here's the thing. If we assume that, <clears throat> okay, there's two different ways to think about this. We can assume that basically at this beginning stage, a bunch of laws or, or just, you know, we can think about it Dar Darwinistically, you know, evolutionarily speaking, like cer certain laws have existed or, you know, in, in a real sense, infinitely many laws all exist. And then some of those laws, some of those interactions between, you know, willed, willed objects, as crazy as it is to think, it's just these things are willed into existence and then, and, and then uh, attributes are willed on top of those. And some of those attributes, you know, cre create a, a meaningful matrix of, of interaction and some don't. Um, we can think about it that way and just that, okay, here's an atom, whatever. Here's another atom. And, and they just, it's just a progressive process. It's just, let's try this. We don't know what it is. We don't know what's going to happen. We're just going to like, it's just going to change. Physicists talk about, you know, us not knowing or, you know, having any reason to believe that the laws of physics won't just change tomorrow. You know, there, there's nothing that says that they couldn't, right? Because we don't understand where they come from. Um, but <clears throat> so, we can think about it this way where it's just kind of like a, a random, uh, you know, throwing of, of stuff at a wall and see what sticks and what, what interacts meaningfully. And then there's just this odd sentient consciousness that if the second that something becomes self-aware, it can start to, you know, basically exert will. And I'm not even sure that self-awareness or, you know, the, the sentience of a human being, you know, that we just, that we delineate from animals is necessary you know, for, for, for a willful existence. I think that in some sense, everything wills itself into existence all the time. Um, or we can, we can think about it in the destiny from the destiny perspective. Okay. Um, you know, that, that basically, okay, somehow there's an, an ultimate sentience that, that concocts this plan, this, this, this master path that even if the, the, the individual conscious building blocks of that path can't see the, the meaning and the, and the value in, in the in the, the destination and in the journey, like th this master sentience could somehow d see it, okay? And so like a good way to think about it, I think, is to think about a video game creator, okay? So if we think about, you know, God as the creator or as, you know, a, a video game creator, um, based, you know, it, just in separate uh, toy examples, um, the video game creator can can make the entire story. It can be an open world. It can be a linear story. It can and, and it can have different characters. Oh God, <clears throat> you know, it can have different characters that, you know, if it is a linear story, I mean, that then and it's truly linear, then you're almost then it's almost a movie, right? But if it's a if it's a video game, then th this is the point. This is the part that I want to kind of highlight. If it is a video game, then sure that like he can the the, the master intelligence can see this whole path and see this character but what can he not see fundamentally he can't see the perspective of the journey and of the character unless he plays the game right so even if even if there, there is a destiny there there is there is a a final destination and, and there's there's a determinate path and, and causal relationship behind all of this and 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 you know, all the suffering and all the, all the misery and, and what we deem as bad in the world actually has a, a real reason that we just can't grasp because we're finite beings. It, it was still willed. Okay. It still had to be willed. <clears throat> and, and so, you know, for us to think that, oh, well, everything is predetermined and causal and, and, and we have a destiny and, and that's it. And, you know, that's all that, that's all that it is. It, it's just material interactions. <laughs> all of, nothing ever came fundamentally from those interactions that we're attributing everything to it's impossible it, it, it can't have happened so it, it's it's either the situation where you know it's everything is kind of only only tied together by 
semi-determinate uh, causal relationships, okay? And at which point we really do have almost an infinitely, an infinitely large spectrum of, of willful engagement with our, with our existence and our, and our human bodies. Or maybe we're, we are predetermined and it is a situation like this, but fundamentally speaking, it was always willed. It was always created from something that is not what we interact with. Um, and this is kind of like the, the crux. It's, it's, it's like, okay, if you want to think that we, that, that we don't have free will and, and everything is predetermined, it can seem very dark. It can seem like, you know, what is the point? What, like, what is, what is the point? It, some, some, like the point can be enjoyment. It can be qualitative enjoyment and of, of the, the universe that we happen to exist in. Um, I've tried living like that. It seems, it's very, um, it's odd. Um, it, it's, and, and frankly, it's, it's just unfulfilling. It, it took me starting to think about it in, in these terms, this one or the other thing. It's like, either it's this or it's this. And either one, I think, is pretty awesome. Because if it's, if it's this one, then it means that, okay, yeah, things really suck from my perspective at different times, but maybe there is a bigger rhyme or reason to all this, and, and there's a reason that I'm, I'm, you know, suffering or other people are suffering, or, you know, it, it, it's, it's literally God's plan. I, I mean, <laughs> that, that's a possibility. We can't rule that out, okay? Or it's this, okay, in which case, you know, in some sense, the illusion of free will is not so illusory and, and it might seem as though the, the stakes are higher in some sense, but I, it's, it's all really at the end of the day, the same situation. It's all like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter, you know, fr from the finite perspective of us playing the character in the video game. Um, yeah. So that, that's basically my, my, my thinking about this and uh, just hopefully this was helpful or useful. If you uh, have any comments or suggestions or uh, just different takes on it, I, I'm, I'm curious to hear it. I, I mean, this, this, um, the reason why I share it is because this has been transformative for me to think this way. Um, you know, I, I, having a deterministic mindset, um, I, I used to follow Sam Harris and he talks about the, the illusion of free will. I want, I want to talk more about what illusion is. What's real? Like, what, what, what can we say is real? Can we say that, that will is, is fake? even though we can talk about it. Is anything that we talk about fake or not real in some sense? It, it's, it's very, very, very confusing um, and interesting and engaging. And uh, it can transform your life, you know, if you think about these things, not in the right way, but just in your own way, you know? And, and maybe this will help you, you know, spur your mind into, into thinking about things your own way. But uh, anyway, thank you. Um, <laughs> thanks for watching the video. Uh, give me a like and a subscribe. Uh, peace out.